over there around it. I go in there myself because I would like to drag y'all that sucker out into the square, cut that symbiote out his head, hold it up for the world to see that that's what's been causing all the Earth's problems for thousands of years. Thousands of years this little rotten bastard has been causing problems. You see, it worked like this. The Yahweh dude is calling himself Maitreya over in Africa. Scroll down my page a couple months. You'll see all the information, all of the verification that you need to prove exactly what I'm saying so you don't have to just accept my word. Um, one of my teachers said, if you're going to use right knowledge, you got to use the facts. And, you know, in the system we in, they believe in facts. And so scroll down. Look. Tell me what you see. Maitreya was an ancient Babylonian deity that we call Enlil or Ninurtu. And he came down here and um, he took the reins from his brother who was Enki. Now Enki wasn't a bad dude. He was just a scientist. And he followed a code of science. But he was under the order of this guy that they call um, Enlil. And Enlil give him an order. And Enki being righteous by nature. He's naturally righteous. He has to obey the superior order of a superior command even if he don't agree. He told him that he couldn't do what the queen of heaven and earth could do. He said, I don't care. Figure it out. Get it done. And he did the best he could, but it caused a lot of problems. In the process, it created a lot of birth defects, genetic infirmities, and inequalities in the genome of the human body. It was only one person on this planet at that time that could repair the genome. And um, a lot of the historians call him in Egypt, Thoth, or Jehuti. In your Bible, you see him in the Old Testament as Melchizedek, the king of peace. And when you see this, you begin to realize that in order to clean the mess up, somebody had to make a major sacrifice, which is your Christ story. Because when you go back, every genetic event recorded in Kemet or Egypt, every genetic event, you see Thoth standing there. What happens when he get done doing the work of the repair, right? What happens? It's all fixed. Everybody has now earned the absolute right of ascension. So if you're willing to put in the work and the effort and you're willing to earn it, you can get as high as you want on this planet and in this plane. But if you want to be a lazy, selfish, self-centered slob that feels entitled, then you're on your own. You're on your own. We shouldn't have to tolerate this. And we don't. Marry the truth to the spirit. Expose the beast. I'm willing to do it. But I can't do it unless the people want it done. Because I'm not going to go against the will of the people. If you wish to be oppressed, that's fine. But Sun Wukong never fails. You need to understand that. Now, they say in the book, everybody was going to be waiting for somebody to crack the code. And they gave the book to the only one that could read it. And the one that read it was me. I read the book. I got the proof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in my, um, in my um, temple of self and lay back. Because at this time, in this day and age, we do not have to tolerate this injustice, this divide and conquer the separation of the human families anymore. All royal families of the world gave their blood so that everyone could have a right to a sin. America became special when we granted the 13 colonies. We got sacked. We lost the war. The Treaty Settlement, Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Somebody didn't like that. So King George sent his troops over here and installed an interim government under the false president, George Washington. We are not under that anymore. That's expired. 
We are under the Continental Congress. That is our rightful um, standing in this in this land. Is the Continental Congress? It was the Iroquois Confederation of Nations. And as long as we sit here and accept this tyranny, we're going to be terrorized. They're going to call us everything. See, we're not supposed to have anything called the police. And that's why they keep shooting people in the back. And then it's bleeding over into the real um, enforcers of the code of righteousness that we call the Sharif. Or you call him the sheriff. Now let's talk about the sheriff for a minute and trace him back. If you trace them all the way back, they go back to the Tents of Kedar. The Tents of Kedar was established to protect wayfarers from tyrants on the, high, on the, um, and the desert trails of trade, what they called the Silk Road. And they guarded the holy city of Mecca under these tents, and they established mighty armies of Hashashin, or sleeper cells, that at the correct time, they would all be prepared <clears throat> to move into action to redeem the righteous and to oust the wickedness from amongst us. We can accept it or we can reject it. Now, my motivator is, because I've been knowing this for a while, but because people seem to delight and wallow in the misery and the self-pity and the entitlement and um, the capitalizing on the misuse of the labor and the works of others because of this, I wouldn't say nothing, but then my mama told me that I needed to have a child, and I ran into a young lady who wanted to have a child that broke every word she gave me, and then she expected me to honor it, my word to her. I never broke my word to her. She broke the contracts between us. When she did that, I was no longer obligated, but I'm looking at my son, right? Pay attention. And I'm asking myself, when my son become a man, my son is becoming a man. And he said, Dad, the world messed up out there. Do you know why? Yeah, I know why. You mean you actually know the problem? I said, yeah. He said, well, how do you fix it? And then I give him the answer. He said, wait a minute, Dad. Now, you knew what the problem was. You knew what the solution was. And you didn't do nothing? No. How can I explain that to him? How can I tell my son? That I left my, the world's problem that I knew how to fix for him to fix. Now I got a dilemma. Now I got a dilemma. What do I do from here? I know I'm looking at a march towards the destruction of me. I'm watching people coming against me, but they don't know I'm watching them. They don't know that I'm seeing the slide looks and the snotty looks in the... Um, fake friend gestures that they give me because I don't hold them responsible for what these animals has done to us as humans I hold them responsible for when I have shown them personally and in person the issue clearly and concisely and they still ride with the enemy that means that they are unrighteous by nature because when righteousness comes unrighteousness perishes all right, so what do we do? I mean, I can call them all and we can get unruly. I'd rather not. I'd rather not get unruly because we would be contributing to the blood rights that's keeping these animals in power by us killing each other. One of my pet peeves <clears throat> is wounded warriors. There's no way if you study history, when warriors came back from war, they were what they called duly compensated. That mean they was given they just do. So what happened over here? They give them some pennies. You don't do that to your warriors. And that's why the mother should tell their children to come home because if her children are fighting in the name of what they believe to be righteous, they are deceived. There's nothing righteous about any wars on this planet. Nothing righteous about them because they're all driven by a population quelling agenda and a genocidal agenda of the human family so that some imposters can claim the entire planet for themselves. Not on my watch. So I have to speak up. I have to speak up because I have children. 
I'm going to have grandchildren one day if I live long enough. I have to say something that resonates so deep with the people that they understand. We don't have to live like animals. We are human beings. There's no big eyes or big U's in this scenario. Um, our most impactful and our greatest position of power is in the unity of the human family. Now, they gave us a blueprint in Sumer to take over an entire planet. They gave us a blueprint in Sumer to take over an entire planet. And this is why they wanted to violate the gender contract and promote what they call the gay agenda. That's fine. I have no problem with a person's sexuality, his religion. His social position and his social standing. I have no problem with his gang affiliation, with his tribal affiliation. None of that stuff bothers. The only thing bothers me is the wickedness. That's the only thing I care about getting rid of is the wickedness. So here we go. What are we going to do as a human family? Are we going to come together on our own accord? and stand in unison against this beast i go get him but i'm not gonna go get him if y'all want to wallow in the in the misery the system can stay in place and you can continue to suffer but we don't have to suffer no more we have to treat workers with dignity and respect i look at these corporations and they suck all of the money from the life of the worker and i watch the worker work so hard and they have to get overtime because they can't gotta make enough to pay the bills that's insanity. Your labor, when you sell your labor, because that's what you do when you go to work, they don't even tell you how to calculate how much you should be making hourly because it's based off a of calorie burn. It's based off a of, uh, calorie burn in fractional reserve labor practice, which is very similar to fractional reserve banking where they only give you a tiny percent of what you actually generate from your labor and the burning of your calories. So your conservation of energy, you have leaks everywhere. If you patch the pipe up, if you could learn how to conserve your energy, everybody can live a very, 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 there won't be no poverty on earth. It's enough sustenance on earth to sustain the entire population. We allow these companies to dig into the earth without the proper rights of respect. And they build these mines and they extract these minerals out and don't compensate the people in the lines of demarcation. That has to stop. The easiest way for everybody to level the playing field is anything that you have to dig in the earth deeper than three feet, which gives the allotment for farmers to make their own stuff. Deeper than three feet, you have to first compensate the people in the lines of demarcation from where it comes from because the earth is providing for those people. I'm going to give you an example. We're going to take the Saudi royal family. You got that royal family is split in two factions and they don't even know it. They got some that are kind and compassionate and want to help the people, but they restrain by the greedy and the selfish. So they dig, they strike oil. In like 1913, in Saudi Arabia became the richest country overnight. One of the richest countries in the world overnight. And the only person they had to answer to was the Pope. Think about that. Now, they got enough oil, right? If they set a system up where people can work for a small period of their life, they can live their life in just as comfortable as the royal family. The royal family doesn't have to hoard the wealth. So what they're going to have to do is, those who believe in hoarding wealth, their own family going to have to get rid of them. Their own family going to have to get rid of them if you want to get rid of the evil. It's not the fault of the people. Um, the people in Iran ain't bad people. But the bad people in Iran makes Iran look bad. The people of Syria are not bad people. But the bad people in Syria make Syria look bad. Everybody in America not bad people, but the bad people in America make America look bad. This is every country, equally. The same oppressor, the same subjugation, 
and the same bringing it all to an end. I remember one time I heard somebody look at me and say, hey, are you born on the 4th of July? Threw me for a loop. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. I can tell you this. First chance I get, UAW, auto workers, I have the first claim of right to adjust your contract in favor of the worker, Ford, Chrysler, and GM. This need to be open and public because of the lies, deceit, and treachery. They need to stop doing this stuff in back doors. You need to have all your contract negotiations out front and in the open because that takes the element of corruption out. You can't lie to the people while they're seeing what you're doing. Now, I refuse to participate any longer in the tyranny. I haven't been at work in months. I haven't paid a bill in months. And I haven't seen my son in a couple months as a result because they have women who think that the child should be used as a paycheck. Before I let my child be used as a poker chip, I will literally starve to death. I will starve until I don't have nothing left to eat ever again in life until the last micro um, cell of my body is dissolved. I will not allow anybody to use my children as poker chips for their own economic gain because they can lay on their lazy asses. I'm not going to participate. And just like I'm telling y'all with this war stuff, they want us to kill each other and turn on each other like wild animals. Don't participate. Mothers, tell your sons to come home and your daughters. If they wear a uniform, no matter what they rank, tell them to come home. All you generals in the militaries around the world, when them rogues come telling y'all to go blow something up, don't do it. it don't, it's not necessary. If it was necessary, I wouldn't even say nothing about it. All this, they don't, they want us to kill each other so they can stay in power. We shouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I don't agree with it. Now, mind you, I might advocate peace, but I'm not peaceful. I advocate peace because it's in the interest of the people, and the most people can benefit the most from peace. I'm for just what's right. Just do what's right. Follow the laws of might. Don't get caught up in the slant that they put on your information. See, now times have changed. And we have an opportunity to place ourselves as one human family in unity across all borders and barriers. We can do that or we can continue to walk this path of self-destruction. I remember Chaos One assembled a lot of New York artists and um, they made a song called Self Destruction. And it made so much sense to me and I made me want to be a, a hip hop artist. Then, years later, a couple years later, here come, um, I don't know who was the initiator, but the West Coast Rap All Stars, <clears throat> they dropped a song called We All in the Same Game. And y'all didn't even realize we all in the same gang for real. It's us against the tyranny. It's not us against each other. It's not for us to kill each other like wild animals. That's not for us. That's not what we're here for. The wild animals can do that. Let the lions kill the zebras out in the, in the bush. But in the human family, we didn't operate this way. We walked in love, harmony, and peace with each other until... Invaders came. Now, I didn't been here a long time, and I done took on many forms. As you see in my name, Morpheus, meaning one who transforms, meaning one who morphs for peace, who frees us. All these things are in the alchemical name. The name had to be alchemically charged over a period of time. Now, in order to have the hundred monkey effect, in order to make the vibration of this planet uninhabitable for this beast, I had to figure out a way to get the people to chant the word, more free us. More free us. I had to figure out a way. 
So I attached it to the music industry, turned it into a rhythmic tone. Because, you know, the sacred tones is the key to all this. When you intone the correct uh, vibration, it all comes crumbling down on his head. He can't control us with this wickedness. Now, we all know that the human seed was corrupted. And this is how, and like the Saudi family have, those who wish to do Mother Teresa type work with all that surplus wealth. But then you have those who wish to look at it in a vault with big eyes and be like, oh my, I'm rich. Now, the ones who want to do the Mother Teresa type work need to be in charge of the money. The other ones need to be beheaded. But that's not my responsibility. That's up to the people of the Saudi to deal with.